I went to go see a, a dialect coach, mm. and, and I'm telling her, and I'm showing her the stuff, and she's like, you know, and I played her the audition tape and everything, and she's talking to me, like, and I'm like, yeah, because, you know, I'm working tomorrow, and I got to record it. She goes, no, what do you mean? This is the audition. I said, no, I didn't audition. I got it already. Mm. And she looked at me and said, you got it with this? <laughs> That's what she thought of the tape, and she wasn't wrong. Welcome to Out of Frame, a nerdy filmmaker podcast where I sit down with actors and creators from across the entertainment industry discussing the successes and struggles within their stories. My name is Julian Stambouli, a.k.a. The Nerdy Filmmaker, and today we are joined by Ben Zantuan, an actor who, after a successful start in TV and film, landed the role of Baptiste, a combat medic in one of the most popular competitive video games of all time, Overwatch. Can you please put your phone away? Yes. It's, it's, God. Sorry, it's a bad habit I have. Jeez. <laughs> Live in the now, Ben. Oh, man. Live in the now. You already busted me up. <laughs> Just started. <laughs> Benz, you are, we met you here at Bean Duck. So we're filming at Bean Duck Productions. We met you here through our performances, uh, performer services. Um, and we've met you like so many other great actors in the city. Um, but... Because most of our time together has been spent in this atmosphere, I don't know much about your past. Mm -hmm. so let us know a little bit about yourself. Where were you? Where did, where did you come from? Where were you born? Well, it all started with my mother meeting my father. Um, then we can fast forward to where we are now. <laughs> um, I was born in Montreal, born and raised. Spent most of my uh, spent most of my life here. I can say, except for the first ten years where I was bouncing around between <clears throat> Toronto, California, New York. And then by the time I got back here, so I spoke French first, by the time I got back here, all my family was talking to me and I asked my mom, who are all these French black people? Mm -hmm. She's like, this is your family. So that's how it started. You went to university in, in Montreal? I sure did. It was a Concordia? Concordia, oh. yeah, I started in economics, and then I went to philosophy, and then I uh, ended up in theater. Mm. So uh, all those three things combined actually came in very, very handy into really? the business. Absolutely. Very you you cool. got to know your economics, and you better know your philosophy to get through this business. <laughs> Comes in very handy anytime I want to debate someone. They have a hard time winning. I'm not going to try. Because <laughs> fun fact, I'm an idiot. <laughs> so you went through you went through Concordia. Were there um, were there other Actors in this and currently still in the city that that you've kind of stayed connected with. Stayed connected with n not very many. A because, I mean, I don't, I don't really like actors. If I can, you know, if we were just talking me and you, I so I would have said without no hesitation. Yeah, of course. So um, I I do have some very close dear friends of mine that are still friends with me today um, after all these years. But yeah, no, it's uh from that program, um, probably only one person that I still talk to. Mm. So you switched from economics to philosophy to acting, if I got that order mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. theater. Mm -hmm. What made the switch to theater, and at what point did you start hating actors? I think that was from the very beginning, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I only went to school after I started working in the business. Mm. So I realized um, that, you know, with my other experience from my other life, that I was able to hustle my way into the entertainment business, namely into acting. But then when I got there, I kept seeing this BFA thing, BFA, BFA, BFA. So I was like, what the F is a BFA? <laughs> so I went into um, this casting house. It was actually um, one here, uh, Andrea Kenyon. I went mm -hmm. into there and I said, what's a BFA? And she's like, oh, it's a bachelor in fine arts, you know, but that's not for you. I said, what do you mean it's not for me? Okay, whatever. So I went in and I got into the program. You know, I mean, I, I studied my monologues. I got my coach. I got raised in the sun. And, you know, I got in the program. I already knew it was a quota. <laughs> it didn't matter how you got in as long as you're in. So I got in and then uh, stayed there for a while. And then uh, just before graduating, I said, you know what? This is taking a little bit too long. <laughs> I got to get out of town. <laughs> Maybe she wasn't wrong after all. Did you drop out in your last semester? I mean, I would say, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't useful to what we're doing. Mm. Once you know the truth, I mean, this is my truth. So for me, I was like, mm, this doesn't help me. And I had to prove because I was already working. Mm. So I just wanted to know. I didn't want to ever be at a table with somebody who was um, trained 
and for me not to have anything to say. Right. So I just wanted the training. I didn't really care about the paper. I didn't really care about whatever, how it was remembered. I don't care about that. I just wanted to learn something. Yeah. And I felt like I did learn a lot. I had a lot to learn, you know. Um, I learned about chakras and all types of stuff that I that didn't seem like they were useful back then. But, you know, the first time you ever do a play, you realize why you do all that stretching and, and, and breathing and all the things that we were doing. I'm like, why are we doing all this stuff? And then you realize, okay, that's why we're doing it. So once I understood it, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm out. I also find that, like... <clears throat> You know, arts, the arts in general, BFA as a is like really the only degree that's not needed mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you, you you need your degree to become an accountant or to become a this or that. <clears throat> and specifically in acting, I actually know the opposite in that. Well, obviously, people have gotten some great training out of you know you've got your an amazing actor and and I know so many people who come out of these universities with amazing training and talent. I do know certain Montreal actors who have actually, in a way, been discriminated against because of their degree. Mm -hmm. American Productions see a Canadian school that might potentially have some kind of mm -hmm. bias in it. But also, I know a French actor who went to, into, to, through the theater program in English. Mm -hmm. And now, as a f an actor with a French accent, is not often seen in English. And as a French actor with an English diploma, is no longer seen in French, mm. you know? That's what you call the worst of both worlds. That's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so yes, congrats to you on dropping. <laughs> yeah, you don't <laughs> need it. That's all I'm saying. You don't need it because at the end of the day, um, Angela Bassett has an MFA, I believe, and with all her training, she wasn't able to realize what was required for Monsters Ball and then the other lady who got the, who actually understood it, got the Oscar for it, didn't have any of that. Mm. So in the end, I would never assert that Halle Berry is a better actress overall, pound for pound, than Angela Bassett. But she was better for that. Mm. And so, you see, it's never really going to be a clear path to, you know, and that's the thing. That's what I was telling a friend of mine the other day. I'm like, you know, unfortunately, this business is not a meritocracy. You know, if you if you play um, baseball and you can hit the corners and you're a pitcher, well, then then you're going to get very far in that business. If you can hit the jump shot, if you can catch the ball, if you can run fast, you can measure all those things. A lot of what happens in acting, you can't really measure. Mm -hmm. So if you can't measure it, what's the point of having the paperwork for it? It don't mean nothing. Right. You know, listen, you have to keep proving yourself. But if you prove yourself, you can build right. off of that. In this business, even when you prove yourself... Um, it's very hard to, and, and, and it's funny because it doesn't just happen to actors who are unknown. Yeah. It happens to people that are famous because mm -hmm. now they become too famous and now oh, I don't want that person. Mm -hmm. That person, no, I don't want that person. So you see what I'm saying? They don't even get a chance to get out of the mold that they got into to get all that money. Yeah. And all the ones who are not in it are like, man, I would love to get in the mold like that to get that kind of money. Right. So everybody's trying to get something, you know, and it's a, it's a tough business. Right. It's definitely a tough business. And so you said you were getting, you had already gotten work before you went into mm -hmm. university. So what was your first work opportunity as an actor? Well, um, I was dating a girl that was an actress. Mm -hmm. She said, take me, you know, take me to my audition tomorrow. I'm like, why even bother going to, what are you talking about? What is this? I'm like, you're not going to get it. You're not, you know, what I said. And then, uh, <laughs> and then uh, at that time, at that time I was a rapper. Believe it or not. Oh, cool. So, um, you know, but she said, come on, just take me to my audition. I'm like, all right, cool. So I took her to the audition. I was sitting in the waiting room, and some lady comes out and goes, are you next? Are you ready to go in? I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> She's like, oh, no, because, I, I mean, I thought you were here for the audition. I said, no, I just dropped somebody off. I'm waiting for him. She goes, don't you want to come in? I said, no. She goes, boy, I need people like you. I didn't understand what she meant back <laughs> then, but I know what she means now. <laughs> And then I said, uh, no. And then she walked away. And when she was real far, I said, well, what is it? <laughs> and then uh, she came back and sh sh showed it to me. And I was like, all right, no problem. So I went in there. Um, I read it. I got the role. She didn't. And we broke up. <laughs> and so my prediction was actually correct. <laughs> <laughs> my, 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 my prediction was actually correct. 
I just didn't know that I would actually be a part of it. Oh man! So, um, so that's how I got started in that business. Fan. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, bless her soul. She's a great person. She's still in the business. You know what I mean? And she's doing good. And, uh, you know, and I'm doing good. So we, we're, it's okay. But at that time, it was obviously, yeah. uh, you know. It's hard dating people in the same industry, especially when it's like an industry like this. I, would, I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it again? I, I, I've done it. Uh, I've done it off the record. <clears throat> but <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do it again because... The few, the, okay, so the few times I've done it off the record, right? So off the record means it wasn't like no crazy serious relationship, and it never got to that point for the reasons I'm going to illustrate just now. So you know, you're, I'm talking, I'm dating to this girl. She's an actress, blah blah blah, and then we start talking about you know the business like we do, and she's like, oh, I don't always talk, I don't want to talk about the business. I'm like, man, you, you, we, you, we don't have that many things in common. This, this is pretty <laughs> much it. This is pretty much it. So if you want to strike this as the, off the list of things we can talk about, we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> and we eventually very had a very big problem. So that was that was that experience. Yeah, in the business, not so great. Um, you're successful, they're not. They're successful, you're not. Then you have to be sort of equally unsuccessful or equally successful. Yeah. Very hard to balance that. Yeah. You know, I'd rather have someone who doesn't really, who has a you're crazy enough as it is. I don't want to add another crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's okay. uh, so that's it for that. Like Those accountant is like a good good balance. librarian. Yeah, good good balance. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And so you're so you booked this role. Yeah. It was one day? Oh yeah, yeah. One, one day. Cor- day. It was a corporate video. It was oh. like talking about interest rates in a bank or something. Right. And uh, it was just like whatever, just yeah, and luckily you had your finance background. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I didn't realize it. You just I made me realize. This and- <laughs> you just made me realize. No, at that point my my whole game was just sound like a white guy. If mm. you sound like a white guy, then you're gonna work. That that was my that was as simple as my thought yeah. process was back then. Got it. Was n- to have less flavor. Apparently I still need more flavor, <laughs> like I told you. But so uh, yeah, that was my whole game. But then I got after that I got a, I got a, my first real TV role on a show called Sirens. Mm. which was shot here in Montreal a very long time ago. And then, um, so that was another one of those where it was not, you know, it wasn't a big role, but it was a nice paycheck, bigger than I was, bigger than I was expecting. And, uh, and then from there, everything just started rolling. Nice. Yeah. So back then, when you, when you got your first role um, and you kind of started picking up then, were you able to find representation right away? Oh, at the beginning? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, when you're, when you're a minority, you have certain advantages, and I was one of them. Mm. You you went to school, you know, you got your gigs already. You got a couple gigs without them, so now you're showing up, mm-hmm. you know, and you have some type of experience. You have confidence. Yeah, absolutely. Even to this day, it's very, it's not that complicated, you know, getting representation. Mm-hmm. The complication starts once you start having expectations on things that you want, mm-hmm. uh, on how you should be treated how you should be viewed um if you if people start to know you then it becomes you got to fight against that because they don't want to see you for certain roles that you want to be seen for once you start knowing what you're doing then that becomes a bigger problem mm-hmm. so you know it's not the agent's fault they're only a spoke on a wheel there's only so much they can do mm-hmm. it's your job to create an attractive package mm-hmm. that they can go out and and sell you yeah. know it's no different than a real estate agent you know they can't renovate your bathroom and figure out how to, you know how to decorate the space for it to sell properly. That's on you. Well, then I'm finding a different real estate agent. <laughs> Always know. blame it on the real estate agent, know, but the real estate agent can't do nothing. You know, so much. It's a cycle. You know, they 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 can only go as far as they can go, and once you try to go somewhere else, they can't take you there. It's unfortunate. You know, yeah. you might have to uh, figure out another another uh, another co-pilot because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, everybody can only take you as far as they can go. You know. You don't like actors. <laughs> How do you feel about acting? Well, I love acting. I love, I love everything about it. Mm. Um, you know, what makes it <clears throat> unpleasant, you know, is there's, see, it's called show business. Mm. The show part is great. The business part is where sometimes, hmm, a little tricky. So get an audition. Fantastic. That's great. I'm going to have an opportunity to go out and do what I do. The bad part, I got to bump into other fools trying to do the same thing. And now you're all in the waiting room playing peacocks, 
You know, like walking around talking about I did this, I did that. What have you been on? What are you, you know? I remember this one dude in Toronto used to always say, how are you? And then when you tell an actor, how are you? They start telling you what they've done. And he stopped people and said, no, 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 no. no. How are you? Mm. How are you doing? How's your family? How are you living? You know? And that's, and I, and I would hear him talk to people and I would say, man, why is he even talking to these actors? But he, he would do it. He would say, how are you? Mm. Don't tell me about your resume, about what you've been up to. Talk to me. Tell me who you are. And you know, the few times where I've had connections with some really cool people that happened to be actors, it was because they were just cool people. Mm -hmm. The fact that they're, and I became fans of theirs, you know? And, 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 and it wouldn't even be me trying to compete with them anymore. It'll be like, how are you doing? I'm so happy for you. I saw that you got this. That's amazing. Fantastic. And you can actually become friends, you know? So it's rare, but it happens. So you worked on Siren, and you, you've worked on a lot of series. I was checking your IMDb before. Yeah. Know, I, was checking, I, was, I was snooping you out this morning. <laughs> you know, and there's lots of shows that I recognize. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Montreal bases 19-2. And, yeah. Uh, I, saw, I think I saw you were on The Expanse. Mm -hmm. that, was that right? Absolutely. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm IMDb friendly. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's to my advantage if you want to go to IMDb. That's to my that's advantage me. I, I encourage you all right now, <laughs> press pause, go check out Benz's IMDb. <laughs> I'm sure there's been some productions that have been closer to you than others, but have there been some roles that have been extremely meaningful to you and, and uh, stuck with you in a way? Um, yeah, of course. You have some that you know stand out. You might have like your biggest payday. You might have um, you know an actor that you always want to work with. Mm -hmm. You know, they all represent something to you at a certain time. You know, I remember I did a I did a movie up here and I met. Um, Sean Young, mm. and I was like, I was mad nervous, and I was like, why am I so nervous, you know? And I didn't really know why I was nervous, you know? So, and that stood that stood out to me, you know? I did a movie with uh, with this cat named Kim Coates, and uh, you, you now that sounds familiar. You no, know, Kim Coates, yeah, from uh, Sons of Anarchy. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, um, and I and I remember working with him, and I remember feeling like I'm a little nervous or something. Like I'm, he's got like. I don't even know if it's nervous. He just makes you feel something like you're not you're uneasy. Yeah. And um, so th th those moments, you know, they, they stick out and they give you the confidence for the next one, you know. For me, I just wanted to be in one movie. Yeah. I only started this thing, you know, you know, when you talk about why you started something, I only wanted to be in one film. I remember I seen this, this, uh, this, this movie called Juice. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. It might not be in your repertoire. But you can check it out. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not actually, on my DVD shelf, no. <laughs> it's actually it's actually a good movie. Uh, it stars uh, Tupac. Okay. Um, and uh, Omar Epps was in there as well. Definitely. So it's not like, you know, it's people you know. Um, so anyway, there was this dude in, in, in that film, and I'm watching it, and I, and I would just see the reaction of, of my friends and everything when we were watching the movie. And I'm like, man, it'd be cool mm -hmm. to be... In a movie that all my friends want to go see. Yeah. Now, key word that all my friends want to go <laughs> see. So has that happened yet? So I start exactly. <laughs> so I started. Uh, I started, you know, doing these things, and I realized that none of my friends want to go see what I've been in. Not even my mother want to see what I've been in. <laughs> like she sleep on my stuff all the time. Okay. So, <laughs> and then I did this movie that finally everybody wanted to go see which was Get Rich or Die Trying. Oh, okay. I have a few of them, but right. that was the one that all my friends and family wanted to go see. And the reason I knew they wanted to go see it, because even before it came out, they'd be like, yo, did you, did you hear I hear 50 Cent's doing mm -hmm. a movie? Meanwhile, I'm sitting there going, I got a role. And, I, and, and, I got <laughs> and you a, can't tell them. No, no, I'm, I can tell them, but I don't tell them, because I'm like, at this point, I'm seasoned. I'm like, yo, it's going to happen. I didn't realize it until the movie came out, and people were calling me, telling me, I seen you in this movie. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, okay, so, oh my God, it happened. Everybody I know wanted to go see the movie and I didn't have to ask them to go yeah, see it. They, awesome. just, they just wanted to go see it. You, can I just say first off, that has literally been my dream as an actor mm. is to be in a, in a film and not tell anyone about Absolutely. it. And then they go to see Absolutely. the new Lord of the Rings oh, and there and is like my full scene and they're just like, what the... That's been my dream. Boom, I did that. Oh, I did God. that. I, I was in a film called um, 
Four Brothers. That's the one I thought you were yeah. going to say. Four I Brothers. Saw that on your... So Four Brothers, you know, I'm in, I'm in the movie theater with this girl. I had just recently met the girl, so she didn't know what I had been doing up until now. <laughs> so, now <laughs> so, so now I'm sitting in the theater and, you know, you're on the big screen. You're happy. You're proud and everything. And she, you know, when I came on screen, that was actually the first time, too, I came on screen. And, I, and I, all I heard in the theater was, mm, 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 mm. And I heard all the girls, you know, doing all this stuff. <laughs> And then she's looking, she's looking at the screen, and you can see her slowly just <laughs> shift her, her head. Like <laughs> <laughs> And you're sitting there just going, ah. <laughs> or you fool, you just like just watch the movie. <laughs> you just chill, you know. Just, so it was, you know, hey, listen, I cannot complain. I sometimes I say to myself, you know, I'm not where I want to be, and I have so many things I want to do. But when you actually take time, you know, for, you know, situations like this, when you're just recapping, you know, what you've been mm-hmm. doing, you realize, you know what? I've been, I've been, I've been blessed. You know, yeah. it's a a lot of people haven't had a chance to do that. So it's be grateful. Mm-hmm. You know, and so <clears throat> if you, because we were having dumplings right before coming on to this this podcast. Well, I had the dumplings. You had a dumpling. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I want to ask about because we were talking about being satisfied mm-hmm. um, with what we're doing, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you had um, you had let me know that you weren't fully satisfied, and at times the opposite, dissatisfied. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to know what would satisfaction look like to you? What what needs to happen, or what chain of events, or what feeling do you need to have when you are participating in film? I mean, I think everything in life has to do with your expectations. Right. So, for example, if my expectation for the day would be there would be um, people feeding me grapes while I was doing the interview Mm. and I get here and they're not here, then my expectation, I'm I'm not happy. You could have just asked me. I I don't I don't I don't really think I would toss some anger. I don't don't, know. Tossing and feeding it the same thing. I'm just saying it's all about your expectation. You know, I mean, the first time I got a big show in Toronto. Uh, which is a show called Blue Murder. Uh, I played a cop, a detective on the show. That was my first big, big, big gig. Like, you know, big paycheck, big treatment, everything. So about a couple of days before work, somebody knocked on my door. I opened the door. This is a white dude. He's like, hey. I'm like, what's up? He's like, um, I'm your driver. I said, driving into what? What's going on? He's like, I'm going to pick you up on Monday. I'm your driver for the Blue Murder. I'm like, Okay. But why are you here now? He's like, I just want to know how you like your coffee. I said, what you mean? He goes, so when I come pick you up in the mornings, it's going to be sometimes more early than the actual coffee shop is going to be ready. So I'm going to buy the coffee, and I'm going to make it for you the way you like it and bring it to you so that you got your coffee regardless of the time. So I'm looking at him going, you're joking, right? (laughs) And he's like, no, I'm dead serious. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I tell him. We start. Cool cat. We're still friends to this day. I love this dude. You know what I mean? And But the expect, that wasn't my expectation. Mm-hmm. So then I'm on the show. You know, I never had no driver before, so I ain't got nothing for him to do. He's like my driver. Each of the four leads had their driver. So my driver, since I'm a, I was a novice at the time, I ain't got nothing for him to do. So he literally had to come knock on my door and say, uh, uh, don't you need any wood for your fireplace? Uh, do you have any dry cleaning? Did you forget your charger at home? Like, did you, did you need me to do something? Because if, if it's not that, he's going to sit there all day and all the other guys and girls are going to be driving around having a ball. So I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> yes, yes, uh, yes, absolutely. The firewood, yes, absolutely, <laughs> you know? And then, but it's all about the expectation. So then, so then once that's the expectation, when you go to the next gig, and you're looking at the contract, you're flipping the pages, you're like, well, where my driver where be I at? I gotta get my own firewood now? What's this happening? This is ludicrous. So that's, and that's when you start being dissatisfied. Mm. And that's, that's until I realized, I'm like, okay, it took me like, it took me like five years after that, after the end of that show, it took me, I'd say three years to understand and say, okay, I get it. All that stuff, the driver, the coffee, all that stuff was for the character. It was relative to the importance of the character. Mm. It wasn't given to me. 
It was borrowed by me because I was portraying the character. So on the next production, if you're not playing a character that warrants that kind of attention, then I guess you're getting your own firewood. Mm. And but I didn't know that until I started breaking it down with my critical thinking. I start breaking down with going, your philosophy. <laughs> you degree. know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay. So in reality, I don't like playing those kind of characters mm. that don't have that kind of weight <laughs> on that production, so that I can get that kind of love. <laughs> So then I started becoming a little bit less unhappy because I started realizing it's got nothing to do with me, good or bad. It's just a fortunate of saying you're fortunate, you got the role, so you get the treatment. But it ain't you because you can't carry the treatment to the next gig. It's only if it's in the budget. If it's in the budget for that gig, for that role, and you're playing that role, then you get the love. Hmm. Once I realized that, of course, I, was, I started saying, okay, so I want to play those roles. Now, not easy to get those roles, as we f soon find out. Yes. But at least now you're mad at the right person, which is no one. There's no one to be mad at. You just don't have that role yet. You don't have, so you're not going to get that prestige. It ain't yours. It's that, borrowed. That is the most philosophical justification of someone just wanting to get the lead. <laughs> Absolutely. Just, just that's no, it. No, you want the lead, but they never tell you that. Yeah. It's the it's the lead that gets that. It's not you. So yeah. major difference, mm. you know, between you getting the love and your character that you're playing getting that love. Mm. So Well, speaking of roles mm -hmm. and all the perks that come along with it. Mm -hmm. It was just a few years ago that um I found out that one of our homegrown Montrealers got cast in the role um, of a new character in one of my favorite video games, um, the game being Overwatch, and your character being named Baptiste, who is a Haitian field medic. Absolutely. Um, I would love to know um, about the audition process first. Well, when they first sent us um, the audition for this, they didn't say what it was. It was under some code name. Um, and so it just looked like... A it just looked like a regular game, mm -hmm. and which I wouldn't know the difference anyway because I didn't know Overwatch. Mm. But people around me knew about it. So anyway, this was a code name. It was just like a French accent, Haitian guy, whatever. And I remember leaving my manager's house, and I was like, um, like you want to do this thing? I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to do it. He's like, I'll just sit at this table right here and just do it on my phone. So I'm like, all right. So I just record it on the phone and um, send it off. And then, they, and then, a short time after, they start calling us, telling us, you know, you're in the top fifty, uh, mm. you know, blah blah blah. And when and we didn't know what it was, is this an internet? Is this North America that yeah. they're auditioning in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you know, we didn't pay no mind. We didn't know what it was. We didn't know anything about it. So we're just like, whatever. We don't really we ignore all that stuff. Then they keep calling, 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 and then he's like, you know, what do you want to do with this thing? Because they keep calling, talking about like, you know, you're like in the top ten or something. I'm like, I don't even know what it is. So then we're not really interested. We're not really doing it. Then we're in like, apparently we're in the top three and we never did anything. So now we're not going to the, you know, they, well, you know, there's a session tomorrow. You have to go. And I'm like, we're not, I don't, why, why am I, what, what is this? So the casting director from Blizzard got on the phone and called, said, you know, manager X, you better, this is Overwatch. I expect you, your client to fall in line nine o'clock tomorrow. And so when he heard it was Overwatch, which still meant nothing to me, but now I started getting a clear picture. Mm. So, of course, I showed up and, you know, uh, like most actors probably feel when they audition for something big, I felt like you know, I bummed. I felt like it was not good. And, and I'm like, you know, sorry, bro. I, didn't, mm. I don't think it's going to work, you know. And, um, and then I ended up obviously uh, getting it. And the funny part when I got it was uh, before I started recording, I went to go see a, a dialect coach, mm. um, Julia. Uh, Leonard. Yeah. So I went in and to go see her, and I'm, and, and I'm telling her, and I'm showing her the stuff, and she's like, you know, and I played her the audition tape and everything, and she's talking to me, like, and I'm like, yeah, because, you know, I'm working tomorrow, and I got to record it. She goes, no, what do you mean? This is the audition. I said, no, I didn't audition. I got it already. Mm. And she looked at me and said, you got it <laughs> with this? <laughs> that, that's how, that's how, that's what she thought of the tape. And she wasn't wrong. That's fantastic. She wasn't wrong. But, and that goes to show you sometimes, you know, sometimes you think something might not be great, but you don't know what they're looking for. 
And I think that's the key, mm. uh, not only to life, but specifically to this business. You don't know. I had no idea. I'd never done voice work before. Yes, I've, I, you know, I told you I've been a rapper, so I was very comfortable with a microphone itself. Yes. Comfortable with my voice. Yes. I didn't know what they were talking about. I remember out in, during the audition, they were like telling me, like, you know, uh, you imagine you're flying through the air and you're landing. And then I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm in the booth. And then somebody from L.A. said, um, um, what's all that noise? And Because I'm in the booth, like, moving around, <laughs> jumping around and everything. I'm like... <laughs> Getting into character. <laughs> and then the engineer, because I had, I recorded that last call back, so to speak, in Montreal. Okay. So the guy, he's a friend of mine, he's messaging me on my phone going, dude, Chill stop, out. stop moving. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And so that's why I'm like, man, this is, this is not going to work, right? And, but, but it did because of whatever reason they were looking for. Mm. And, you know, sometimes... Even up until recently, the last session I did, which was last week, I remember reading a line a certain way, and they laughed so hard, and they said, Let, let's keep that. You know, and it, it was something, nothing n nothing crazy. Like, it might have been something like, uh, you know, it's almost like, uh, why don't you give me the mask? And then, I'll, and then I would say, you know, why don't you give me the mask? And they just find it funny. <laughs> And it's just wrong, but it's not wrong because there is no right and wrong. You're just interpreting yeah. it. They just never heard it that way before. <laughs> and maybe that's what they were looking for this whole time. And I got a lot of that. If you want if something that sounds wrong, I got they a got lot of that. <laughs> and I mean, they cast you because of your wrong Haitian absolute, accent. So absolute, there you go. Absolutely. Man. Even down to the name. They were like, how would you say this name? I said, what name? I said, your name. I said, Baptiste. And then they were like, okay. Okay. So that's how we'll say it. And then... There was something online with the, you know, there was another character they had that was called something, I think it was Brigitte or Brigitte, and yeah. it was a whole thing. Yeah. So you start doing all these research, you realize, man, the fans were going, were like giving it to her because she wasn't saying it the right way. Mm. So I'm like, oh man, I'm, I've been saying Baptiste for like three months. Mm. It's all over, it's Baptiste. But should it be Baptiste or should it be Baptiste? Mm. And I heard the way you said it. Right off the bat, you said Baptiste. Baptiste, yeah. And I'm like, she, and then they asked me, I said, why did you say Baptiste? I said, well, are we speaking in English? They're like, yeah. All right, so in English, that's what I would say. Now, if you were speaking to me in French, I would have said Baptiste. Yeah, skip the P. Yeah. So, you know, so then I'm like, man. So then I did this video on YouTube where I let everybody know, listen, you can say it with the P. <laughs> or you can say it without the video. <laughs> you made a video oh, yeah, to, you can, you it was just branded out. through through Blizzard? It was your no, personal not video. Even. It was just me. It was just oh me. Oh my god. It was just me sitting at my manager's house and we were just like, you know, I'm like, you can say it with the P or you can say it without whatever. The P. It depends. Yeah, like, it depends on however you feel it. Mm. You know, there's no right or wrong. You can say it with the P. Jean Baptiste Auguste. Jean Baptiste Auguste. Jean Baptiste Augustine. Or you can say it without the P. Jean Baptiste. Augustine. Baptiste. It's not even a debate, people. It's Baptiste. Well, as you can see, different strokes for different folks. And then, and then I got home. My mother said, "Pourquoi tu n'as pas dit Baptiste?" But oh my <laughs> God! <laughs> so, so that started a whole other oh thing. My God. Yeah, it's crazy. That's great. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Well, man. that's funny. Mm. That was a funny story. <laughs> um, <laughs> So okay, so you're you're doing you're doing Baptiste. Well, now now I'm see now I'm conscious about how I'm saying well, you it. You can say it however yeah. you want, no matter. All right, so you're doing Baptiste, <laughs> and um, when you did your first initial recordings, did they did they fly you out to to where they're located? No, or my, they're my first it? my first recordings were at the time I was I was doing some stuff in New York, so most of those early recordings were in New York. Okay. Um, you know, I'd done, I'd done a couple in LA, I'd done a couple in Toronto and I'd done the rest in Montreal. It's wherever you're at. So okay. I think that's cool. Yeah. That's, that's the cool part about it is, you know, you know, if you're here, you're here. They say where, where you want to record. You know, if you're in New York, they're like, we got places over there. We know where we're at. And so I assume now that you are involved in that whole world, you're not, you, you don't have a lot of experience as, well, you said none as a voice actor before this, but as a gamer, no. Mm -hmm. Only game I ever played was like you know the Atari game with the with the with that puck go took and you just go move and it goes took and that's it that's all I ever, that's but all you I ever killed played. it you saw oh, that 
I was the man. That was the man. <laughs> <laughs> so now that you're thrust into that world, mm-hmm. right? And I'm sure you've, so you've done conventions, you've done mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. What has that experience been like for you? Probably the best of my career. Mm. Um, to think that you can work in a career for so many years and no one in your family actually thinks you're doing anything of value until this. This is it, you know? And it's cool, kind of like, you know, you know when you say, what would, what would be a success? Mm. Well, when you're doing something that people are excited about, that's a success, mm. you know? Um, so for me, I got, I got kids in my family that, you know, nieces and nephews and stuff that are like, I wasn't cool before. I'm cool now. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, Overwatch, I mean, it's uh it's a whole nother world. And then from there, it's not like it's not like, oh look, you know, uh, he's an actor playing that voice character. Now it's oh look, Baptiste is in the expense. Oh, Baptiste so right. so you cross over and now they're watching you and other stuff. Yeah. So it's kind of like it's it's very, very, very uh I've been very blessed. That right there is definitely one of the highlights of my career, if not the highlight of my career, mm-hmm. you know? So it's definitely uh, uh, something to be grateful for, to remember when you, in those moments when you're like dissatisfied, remember a lot of good things. That, so much good fortune has had to happen for you to get to this point. Mm-hmm. You'd only be disrespecting all those times to say, well, I'm not happy with where I'm at. You know what I mean? It's just a temporary state of mind versus a, a macro view. Let me throw in some economics in there for you, you know what I mean? So the Thank you. macro view. Oh, you know? bring, it, bring it back. And so, uh, and so what was your first convention? Do you remember? Wales. 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 Nice. Yeah. Wales was my first convention. That must um, have been quite a shock. I was such a rookie that um, when I got to the hotel, um, there was like the, all these, you know, there was, this, there was this dude that comes in and he's like, you know, w- w- would you sign this for me? So, you know, we're like, well, what do we know? We're like unknown actors. So people want to sign them, we sign. So I'm signing. And then he comes back five minutes later with like five more things to sign. <laughs> <laughs> and then he comes back five more minutes later with five more things to sign. Until somebody over there goes, no, 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 don't sign those. He said, you should wait. He's tomorrow, the, con- the convention's tomorrow. Mm. He's hustling you. Yeah. So I got hustled in Wales. I wasn't even thinking about it. I was thinking my guard is down. I'm not thinking I got to keep my guard up, like what's going on. But he was hustling. He was making his money. Great. So yeah. At times you can look at it and be like, man, it's amazing how much excitement is generated. Mm. You know, and just by me showing up, I'm like, it was, it was, I've never felt that before. So definitely a highlight of my career, Mm. for sure. Have you had an opportunity to meet some of the other voice actors? I've met probably nine, eighty percent of them. Okay. Um, most of them are in LA, but you meet them at conventions. Mm-hmm. You meet them at conventions. Oh, it's uh, you know, um, I met them like two at a time, and then you know, um, lovely people, great people, such a family. Uh, if you need some, you know, they're there for you, and it's uh, it's it's nothing like I, I have experienced with actual with uh, f- you know actors. Mm-hmm. Voice the voice actors that I've met, it has not the same energy as with you know on camera actors. So it was a different vibe, more right. of a family, more of a camaraderie mm-hmm. than I found uh, with you know on camera actors. Mm-hmm. You know, no. and if you're going to go out and grab a beer with one of them, which one would it be? I would say, um, I know the answer. I'm just creating fake drama. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, oh, wow. Find out after this commercial break. <laughs> no, it would be Anjali, Symmetra. Symmetra. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Anjali Bamani, yeah. I think it would be her, yeah. It's a, uh, and, 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 you know, with a close second, Fio, Fio would be, would be close second. Okay. But uh, it would be her, yeah. She'd be happy to hear that. It's true. Right. It's true. Very good. <laughs> so you've done Overwatch. Uh, since then, you had, you had not done any voice acting before that, but how about since then? Um, have you have you found a new home in voice acting or video game performance? I have done some stuff. I've had many offers. Um, I've done some interesting things, um, but it's kind of like the gift and the curse. So sometimes you start on something and it's such a high level that whatever comes after might have a a hard time um, moving the needle for you. Mm-hmm. You know that also happened on a French TV show that I did out here where 
I believe it's the best show ever created in Quebec. And I'm, and so what do you do after that? Mm -hmm. You know, what role, you know, such an impactful role. So w w what happens after that? You know, so with Overwatch, it's like, okay, so now what happens? Because mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not a bona fide a voice actor, right? And those, those people are definitely skilled. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, it's not, I'm not me being self-deprecating. Mm -hmm. They're like skilled, like mm -hmm. mad skills. So, you know, you know, you sort of say, okay, your career is your career. You know, you've been fortunate enough to do that. If you, you get an opportunity to do something else, I've done, I've done some other stuff. I've, I've, but if never nothing as big as that uh, yet, mm -hmm. and, um, and you just keep plugging away to whatever excites me. I'm at a point right now where it's got to excite me. Mm -hmm. It's got to challenge me. It's got to make me feel like I'm a rookie, which is what I loved about not about moving around in the booth like 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 that's obvious right but it wasn't obvious to me mm. at that time now i'm like wow how can i do that <laughs> but it, you 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 don't know what you don't know yeah and so that made me excited to learn again you know i think that's what's uh, over the years if you keep doing something in a career and then you lose the i think john jones was saying this i don't know how deep you are into sports but he basically went up from light heavyweight to heavyweight and mm -hmm. he he said well i wasn't i didn't fear those guys i didn't fear them you know now i'm i'm in heavyweight division mm -hmm. i got to fear them and that brings stuff out of you to me you know being a rookie it's like man maybe i'm not good at it maybe i'll fail maybe I, who knows maybe they made a mistake you know the imposter syndrome and all this stuff things that i've never felt in years was back right. and because of that you know i used to leave those sessions thinking I didn't get it done because I saw like it, they had like 140 lines prepared for me and I only got through 40. Mm -mm. And then it would be 60 and then it'd be 80. And then, and then people in the business were like, bro, they don't even let you out the booth if they ain't done with you. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that. And, but now I do. Like the level of precision, you know, yeah, they might go through six, seven, eight lines, but there might be this one line. And if you're on there for 30 minutes, they're going to stay on it until they got it. And if they don't got it, two months later, uh, yeah, Benz, remember that line that we got? They're back. They're not, they're <laughs> we not, gave you two months to work on it. They're not playing around. So the precision, the level of precision, I mean, the kill, you know, his, uh, his ultimate is a line in Creole. And, um, which, is, which is what? Because I've, I've heard that. Obviously, I've heard that line. Yeah. V I've been killed by Baptiste many a time. <laughs> so, um, so the line is, Vide Bale Suyo. Which yeah. means shoot them up, light them up, you know, put all, put all, vide battles, empty your clip on them. Got it. Vide battles for you. And, you know, so, so I'm, I'm about to record, you know, all, all these Creole lines, including that line. So the guy who's in LA, um, I'm, he's like a white dude. And he's like, I'm saying the line, he's like, I'm pretty sure that's not, I don't know what you're saying, but I, I'm, I know it's not like that. I'm I'm pretty sure it should be Vide Basso, yo. He was, I'm pretty sure it's like that. And then it's an example, it's an intonation thing, right? Mm -hmm. So then it's so then I heard what he said and I said, you know what? You're you're absolutely correct. <laughs> so how do you know that? He goes, I, do, I just know it. I just feel it. He goes, I don't know the I don't know the language, but I feel it that it wasn't the way you were saying it. It should be like this. Mm. And that's and that's how the line became. Vide Basso, yo! Wow. So, so, you know, that's experience. That's knowing, you know, and that's how sharp their ears are. It's not even his language. And he's like, that's not it, though. Yeah. You know, so that's exciting. No, have being told by someone who's not that telling you, no, 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 no. This is Creole, right? Yeah, but don't matter. This is what it is. Hmm. And he was right. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that he was right that's, you can say anything in life, but when you look at it and go, you know what, he's right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when I'm like, wow, right. that's level of precision I was working with. So definitely. I'm sure that was not your initial reaction when you have a, <laughs> when you said a, a white guy correcting you on <laughs> Creole. Uh, you know what? It's, it, <laughs> Just... it, 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 it's, it's kind of like, it's exciting. It's almost like a slap in the face, but at the same time, you're like, but you're right. Yeah. You know, so definitely um, that gave me a lot of confidence into knowing that, hey, it's a, te it's a team effort. Yeah. They know what they want to hear. And if you're walking out, the room is because they got it. Yeah. You know? Still, the majority of your performing is mm -hmm. camera. Absolutely. Um, has there been a role that you've seen 
in the past in film that you uh, wish you had played? I mean, if you leave it to any role, that means you're basing it off the performance of that person and you're saying what? That you would have done it better or that you no. wish you could have done it? Well, I mean, sure, I guess it is inspired by the performance of the actor, but I guess you can also look at a character and say, like, I would have had my own interpretation of it. But uh, I don't think it's about doing it better, but more so, yeah, that, you, that there was a role that you would have had a blast doing that you would have felt proud as having it be part of your resume. You, you, you remember a movie called The Fugitive? Mm-hmm. Harrison Ford, right? Mm. You know he wasn't the first choice, right? I did not. Name me someone that you think could have played that role. And I'm going to tell you who the first choice was. Yeah. Oh, my who God. Would you, if you were cast in that movie and you had your pick of the litter, right? If it wasn't Harrison Ford, who would you have picked? George Clooney. I love George Clooney. That would have been a flop. <laughs> <laughs> I love George Clooney. I lo let me be clear. I love George Clooney. The actor who was the first choice was Alec Baldwin. Oh, interesting. Now, Alec Baldwin is probably, he's, he's one of my favorite actors for sure. Um, outside of Denzel, he probably is my favorite actor. He's a great actor. Would you want to see The Fugitive with him or are you okay with Harrison Ford? Yeah, I'm okay with Harrison Ford. <laughs> and that's what I mean, where you're judging it by what you saw. So it's the other actor would have done something different. Mm -hmm. But in our situation now, if you, if, you read, if you read for something and you don't get it, and somebody else gets it, and then you see their career trajectory by the fact that they got it, now that's interesting to mm -hmm. think, hmm, because you got to get ready for that, because that... It's happening. It's happening. It, it, it's happening now. It could happen at any moment. And that actually happened to me. Where prior to that audition, okay, my career and this person's career was set in a certain way. That when I walked into that room, I had no, I had no thought of them. I didn't even think about them. I, they were not even on my mind. Mm. It was a question of, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to get this role. I wasn't thinking about anybody else. But on that day, for reasons that I can explain to you off mic, <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't on my game. One of the first only times in my career where I, I feel like, hmm, I wasn't on my game. This actor, who I was never thinking about, in other words, we had seen each other many times before, we auditioned, and I was, he was non, a non-factor to me. Mm. Great actor, great person, not, not a threat to me. But from that day forward, and that was probably 2004, five, six, around there. So we're talking almost, what's that, 20 years? Mm -hmm. My God, that's 20 years. Yeah. Oh my God. We're old. Yeah. <laughs> Speak for yourself, bro. I mean, you're almost 70 now, so. <laughs> my God, that's a long time ago. And so since that time, I haven't been able to catch up mm. to the the ground that he gained from that role. Now, don't get me wrong, okay? It's not over yet. Not over yet. But the fat lady, she's starting to stretch. Mm. Even when that happened, when he got that role, and I saw, okay, um, the movie, and I saw what happened to him and what happened to me, even on, on, at that time, it's no big thing. It ain't no big thing. I got it. It's all good. But it's not all good because mm. it's been almost 20 years. And I've not been, I've, I've gained, I, and I will reclaim my rightful spot on the throne. Don't get me wrong now. <laughs> don't, don't, don't get it twisted now. I'm going to get my shine, okay? But look how long it takes. Do you think it's healthy to have a, like a, someone that you're, whose career you're eyeing next to you? Uh, in, the, in, a, in a short answer would be no. Mm. That's why I don't do it. That's why I didn't even realize how long it was. In the context of the story, I realized, oh my God, it's been a long time. Yeah, you got to let it go, man. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, the funny part, it's not about him or anybody else. It's about you. Hmm. So that's the thing. In order to win, it's about you. It's not about the other person. In order for you to get what you want or what you think you deserve, 
it comes back to you. Mm. There's no excuse, you know, and we don't do excuses. So it is what it is. But I will get my throne back. Anything that you want to want to share with with people out there, people who might be looking to get started in in in, in performing, any words of wisdom for people who may be dealing with maybe the 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 comparison to someone else, maybe people dealing with stereotyping, maybe people dealing with with whatever. Anything that you would want to share with them. My advice is don't believe anything other than what you believe in your heart. Don't believe what people tell you, um, good or bad. D don't believe, believe what's in your heart. Believe what you know. And if you feel like going out and getting something, whether it's this business or any other thing you want to do, believe in that. You know, don't, don't, don't limit yourself to other people's beliefs because they don't know what's inside you. They don't know how badly you want it. They don't know where you came from. They don't know how serious you are and how far you're willing to go. And because they don't know the variables, how will they know? They, they're looking at you and they're just making that cursory. They're making a judgment, but they don't have the facts. You have the facts. And so because of that, you can use it as fuel if you want to, but certainly don't believe them. People, a lot of times people only see themselves, they can only see you going as far as they see themselves going. So if they're very successful and you tell them you want to do something, they're like, yeah, absolutely, go ahead, do that. But if they haven't done it, they don't want to see you do it. And they don't believe you can do it, and it ain't even their fault. It's your fault for believing them. Don't believe them, believe yourself. That's, that's what I've noticed a lot of times in most of the, the, the important decisions I've made, you know, was always challenged. Was always challenged by whoever was around me. And, but I learned very early on not to believe in them, to believe in myself instead. So... That's why I know I'm going to get my throne back. I'm going to get it back. Can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. Maybe I'll be the one directing the project Absolutely. that you get thrown back Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Oh my God. Absolutely. How serendipitous yeah. would that be? Yeah. yeah. It all started here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ben's Antoine, actor extraordinaire, uh, voice of my favorite healer. There we go. It's not true. Anna's my favorite healer. <laughs> second favorite healer, Baptiste. Second, second good. Second is yeah. good. I'm down with that. Thank you for joining. Hey, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. That was Ben's Antoine, the voice of Baptiste in Overwatch. Now, as Ben's mentioned multiple times throughout the interview, he used to be in a rap band. So, of course, I went digging. And to wrap up this episode, let's listen to the sweet stylings of The Freshman. If you enjoyed the episode, please give us a like, a share, a comment, a review. All of your support helps the podcast tremendously. Thanks again, and I hope to see you in the next one. What I really wanted to do was get next to you, and so I wanted for you to be my girl, and for me to be your guy. The reason why is only because of the way you make me feel inside, and get the school tingling in me when you're passing me by, 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 Tony Bone. How come you're always on the run every time I be getting close? Now I'm sure I'm the one, because the others are only pretending to be able to love you right like a real man. He wasn't a fresh man.